Compressed petrol heads, diesel engines are the devil's work. They don't rev high, they lack power, and they sound like that Kazakh news anchor. But diesels do excel in other areas which can still make them cool. Hey everyone, I'm Stipe, and this is my list of the most impressive diesel cars ever. Tuk, 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 tuk. Number 7. Dodge was actually the last of the Detroit trio to put a diesel engine in their truck, but because Cummins got involved, they did it the best. That's the company that specializes in making industrial diesel machines, and these guys knew exactly what a workhorse truck needed. Basically, it needed a 5.9 liter turbocharged straight six with 160 horsepower, and more importantly, a 400 pound foot of pulling power. That was more than any petrol option, or anything Ford or Chevy had to offer with their unturbocharged diesels. Over the years, the coming six got more displacement, more power, and more torques, a thousand of them, which is enough to pull up to 35,000 pounds. That's just the kind of numbers these dual wheelie heavy duty trucks are boasting. Also, they're as thick as Pixar's moms. As for the small size Ram, up until the fourth generation, it too had the 5.9 Cummins, which was kind of overkill. That thing was engineered for a much tougher workload, which meant that in the Ram 1500, there was a lot of untapped potential. And when there's potential, there's also a tuning industry set to exploit it. This resulted with some diesel trucks running nine seconds on a quarter mile. That's not just fast, that's faster than the Bugatti Chiron. Number six. Grand Tours are the ultimate mile munchers that offer sportiness, beauty, and luxury all wrapped in one. Those are Richmond toys, but fear not my money sensitive friends because the BMW 640D does the same job at just a fraction of the cost. It's a proper GT. Also, compared to its petrol twin, the 640i, the diesel version is outright better. It makes the same power, same top speed, sprints to 60 in about the same time, spins the rear wheels when happy, but it has a couple of advantages too, like the fuel efficiency. 49 MPG on the highway and 36 in the city means you'll be visiting the gas station far less often, and that means more money saved on fuel and fewer interruptions on a grand tour. It makes it a good daily driver too. And the torque, 465 pound feet is second only to the M6, and because most of it lies in the lower rev range, it means that the 640D is ready to pick up its dress and sprint no matter what gear you're in. Also, if you want more practicality, there's the Grand Coupe version, which is simply the prettiest four-door car ever made. There's a convertible too. And you know what? It doesn't sound bad at all. Yeah, I could live with that. Number five. Speaking of things that you could live with, the Mercedes 300D, which you could live with your entire life. Actually, it's more likely that you'll die sooner than the car. It's the 70s Mercedes that solidified their reputation for reliability, obsessing over build quality, ride quality, panel gaps, material choices, overthinking every part of it. Functionality over formality. Formality. It was Mercedes at their finest. And then there was the engine, the OM617, a three liter straight five naturally aspirated diesel that's considered to be one of the most reliable engines ever made. It churned out a measly 80 horsepower, which meant zero to 60 in 21 seconds. Woo! But it also meant that the engine is less stressed than a Buddhist monk, resulting in many testimonials from people who reached over 1 million kilometers. In Europe, the 300Ds were used as taxi cars, police cars, ambulances, everything. It's the German workhorse of a car whose utility was praised all over the world. Even today, you'll find these bulletproof mercs chugging along in some of the harshest parts of the world fact that's surprising to no one. All you have to do is occasionally replace the brakes, change the oil, and make sure it's got some diesel in the tank. Hell, not even that since you can run it on used cooking oil too. That's how resilient the 300D is. Number 4. I'm not a really big fan of the restyled 7 Series. That vulgarly oversized grill sure attracts a lot of attention, but the reaction to it is usually negative, like seeing a girl with gigantic lips. Ugh. Looks aside, the 7 is everything you'd expect from a German luxury limo. Big, opulent, and technologically advanced. Plus, it comes with an amazing engine. I'm not talking about the V12, but a 3-liter diesel with quad turbos. Yeah, you heard that right. Quad. 
The only other manufacturer who ever thought that quads would be a sensible thing to do is Bugatti. Anyway, it produces 400 horsepower or 133 horsepower per liter, which makes this the most power dense diesel engine ever. Nice. That together with 561 pounds of torque and an all wheel drive system makes the 750D sprint to 60 in 4.6 seconds, which is about the same as an Alfa Romeo 4C except BMW weighs more than twice as much. And it just never stops pulling, ever, even in the eighth gear, where most other cars settle down. Without the speed limiter, this ugly brute would theoretically hit 300 kilometers an hour. Put the engine in a smaller 5 Series and it's suddenly good enough to wear an M badge. Not just some cosmetic M badge, but the real M. Basically, the 750D is BMW flipping the bird at everyone who says that luxurious diesel can't go fast. Did you just flip me off? Number 3 400 horsepower sure is nice, but 500 is even nicer. That's what you get in Audi's ginormous Q7. And it's all thanks to this, a 6-liter twin-turbo V12 also known as the most powerful diesel engine ever. Well, you know what they say, there's no replacement for displacement. But where this engine came from couldn't be any further from a seven-seater SUV, Le Mans. After switching to diesel, Audi dominated the endurance racing simply because they didn't have to stop for fuel every so often. Literally, they changed the sport. Drunk with success, Germans wanted to put a modified racing diesel engine in the R8, but a twin-turbo V12 was simply too large for it and required a lot of re-engineering, which would make it unprofitable. But it did fit very nicely in the Q7, and that's the story of how Audi made their least sensible car ever. How often do you see an SUV with a factory-installed wide-body kit and ceramic brakes? Well, the racing brakes are more of a necessity since it weighs almost 6,000 pounds. However, it's the pounds-feet of torque that you'll notice the most. 738 of them feels less like driving and more like riding a tsunami wave. It's enough to jumpstart a Boeing 787 or scare your kids shitless on their way to school. What? A brute. Number two. So diesel cars are more fuel efficient, but how efficient can they really be? Enter the Audi A23L, where the 3L stands for three liters per 100 kilometers, or at 95 MPG. Wow. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the most fuel efficient mass produced car ever. To achieve such numbers, Audi had to pull all the tricks. The avant-garde looking body may be off-putting to many, but when it was new, it made for the most aerodynamic car ever. The tires are super narrow to provide as little drag as possible, and in the center of them are closed dish wheels that reduce the turbulence. An entire car weighs under a ton. Body panels are aluminum, and so is most of the chassis too. There are no optional extras to speak of. It only has one windshield wiper, and even the windows are made thinner to save a few grams. Remember when Clarkson raved about McLaren using this trick on their P1 hypercar? The glass is just three and a half millimeters thick, one and a half millimeters thinner than the glass in normal cars. There's more. The 1.2 liter engine block was made from a lighter alloy. Transmission was specifically designed for efficiency. And then there was the whole eco mode with its own trickery. Sadly, the A2 didn't sell well. It was cheap to run, but that doesn't make it a cheap Audi. It's just a small one. Number one. If you would try to create the perfect car for as many situations, you'd probably end up with the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo 4S diesel with chrono pack. Whew. It's all things to all men, a prestigious badge to make your neighbors envious, four doors and four seats for your family members, a big trunk for their stuff, and an all wheel drive that will help you get easily to Aspen, St. Moritz, or any other prestigious ski resort. But because it's a Porsche, you can expect some serious performance too. It gets to 60 in just 4.3 seconds, which makes it the quickest diesel car ever. Top speed is 177 miles per hour, and if you engage the Sport Plus mode, it'll hunt down most supercars, even when the road gets winding. I mean, look at these lap times. Panamera excels in the urban jungle too. The rear axle steering will help a lot in the tight corners, and because the bi-turbo V8 runs on diesel, you'll get 35 mpg in the city. I know that Porsche buyers don't care much about fuel economy, but that's not a reason to ignore this achievement. The Panamera Wagon diesel chrono thingy is breathtaking in more than one way. It's many cars in one, and all of them are near perfect, which makes this Porsche one of the best cars ever made. Go ahead, 
prove me wrong. Also, can you guess these impressive diesel cars? Did you guess them? Write in the comments down below and make sure you vote which topic I should do next. Links will be everywhere.